Hi, Charles is a Book Sage here, and this is the first video in a new series I'm doing here on my channel called First Impressions. Most of the videos you're going to see in this series are going to be my first impressions of an actual like sci-fi or fantasy series that I start reading. Uh, I doubt there's going to be a first impressions for just a standalone book, but if I come across a standalone that's that compelling uh, as I start to read it, where I stop and want to record first impressions, you might see one popping up, but mainly I'm going to focus on series. And there are three main series I'm reading this year in 2020, and those are the first three installments that you're going to have of this series. Now, for those who don't know, I'm Charles of Book Sage. My channel focuses on science fiction and fantasy. When I first started this channel, I wanted to have a balance of new things, new fantasy and sci-fi that I discovered through other booktubers, and um, classic sci-fi and fantasy stories that just don't have eyes on them anymore, that are just fantastic, fantastic stories. And this first episode here actually fits that bill. Um, um, so today we're gonna, gonna give you my first impressions of Lois McMaster Bujold's The Vorkosigan Saga. Let's get started. Now, for those who follow me on Twitter and Goodreads, you may be saying, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, Sir Charles. You're like five books into this series. How can you be doing a first impression when you've already read five books? Seems like you're well into this series at this point. Three things. One, don't judge me. <laughs> Two, this is a very, very long series. The first one was published in 1986, the most recent one just in 2018. I don't even know how many books are in the series, but there's a lot. Probably at least 15, maybe more. So I'm actually, in the grand scheme of the series, still very early on in it. And also the way it's structured, when you read it chronologically, you know, I'm still at the very beginnings in many ways. And three, the main reason is because I just thought of this idea for this series two days ago. So that's the main reason. When it comes to reading a series, I am very, very much a published order only, or well, publication order only. Uh, yeah, I'm a stickler for publication order, because there are certain series like Dragon Riders of Pern and others where you really need to read them publication order. This series, however, is that rare exception, and um, for two reasons, really. One, um, the author herself recommends reading it chronologically, because she just kind of wrote stories in this whole timeline, not deliberately in any specific order. It wasn't published in the order it's published for any real reason other than those are just the way she wrote it. And she provides an entire chronological list herself for the series. And I'm reading it in that list. Which means the very first book you're going to read is Falling Free. Now this is a standalone story that takes place 200 years prior to the main series. The series as a whole, by the way, focuses on Miles Vorkosikin. He's the son of Lord Aral Rakoskin, a count on Barriar, which is um, an Earth colony that ended up being isolated from everybody for like a long time, and they devolved into this sort of feudal system where there's counts, there's an emperor, and there's very militaristic society among the, the Vor, which are the sort of arist aristocracy and nobility. And less technologically advanced than a lot of the other worlds. And that's where Miles has been born and grown up, and that's where his father's from. His father, when you meet Miles, is the Prime Minister of Barriar. His mother is Cordelia Naismith. She is from Beta Colony. Much more technologically advanced society. Very completely culturally different. Um, she's a fascinating character, such a great, great character in this series. Uh, now, Miles is their son, and he was born um, with some severe physical limitations because of an event that happened where it stunted his growth. And I think I saw on the Wikipedia page where he's like the height of maybe a nine-year-old boy, but he's not like misshapen, like dwarfing or anything. Um, he's just small, and his long bones are very brittle. So they break easily, which means he's got a lot of serious physical limitations on him, which makes things difficult in the Bariaran society because it's much more feudal and militaristic and everything. So he's grown up knowing that his mind is his weapon. 
and he's super smart, super intelligent. He's very good at reading people. He has a hard time following um, orders because he thinks he's smarter than his superiors and that gets him in a bit of a trouble. Um, he's a really, really interesting character. I've been hearing about his character for decades and I'm glad I'm finally reading him now. But let's get back to where I was. First book, Falling Free. It is the backstory about these quaddies, these genetically modified humans. Um, they're designed to live their whole life in free space, in a free fall, um, zero G gravity. So they have four hands and four arms. They don't have arms and legs, they have all arms and hands. And I think they appear in one of Miles' stories, and this is kind of their backstory of how they came to be. I enjoyed it. I read it in September to kind of dip my toe into the Vokosigan world in preparation for this year. I really enjoyed it. I gave it like three to three and a half stars. I think it won the Nebula Award. I will say this though, sharp left turn. Let's talk Cosmere, Brandon Sanderson for a moment. I have not read Cosmere yet. I almost chose that for one of my main series this year, but I'm reading it next year. But I bring it up for a reason. I have read the first chapter of Elantris, and I've read like the first couple of chapters of Warbreaker. That's my total exposure to Cosmere. I have owned a lot of the books. I think I own the Mistborn trilogy in paperback, and I know I own the first Way of Kings book on ebook, but that's not the point. This is not about Cosmere. As I research reading order for Cosmere, however, and yes, I know 2021 is seven months away, but we're booktubers, this is what we do. Um, I've seen the repeated mention of you might read Elantris first. Don't judge the Cosmere series by Elantris. It's a really good book, but not on the level of like Mistborn, Way of Kings, that kind of stuff. And the reason I bring that up here is Falling Free to me, based on the first five books I've read now, would be the Elantris of Vokosigan. It's really good. I really enjoyed it. But from book two on, it's like a whole nother level up. So it's a solid read, but does not reflect just how good this whole series is. So anyway, I just want to get that out of the way. So if you read Falling Free, right after that, go to the um, Shards of Honor. Shards of Honor and Bari are, are books two and three, chronologically. They're the story of Cordelia Naismith, of how she becomes Lady Vorkosigan. How does this scientist and military officer from the Beta Colony end up married to Aral Vorkosigan from Bari are, which is kind of Beta and Barriar are at odds and being mainly almost at war with each other for many, many, many reasons. But what's great about those two books is Cordelia Naismith is I mean, such a great character. I mean, I wish there were more books in the series where it's her story because these were just so, so good. Uh, Shards of Honor, I gave like four, four and a half stars. Barriar, five star book, hands down. Hugo Award winner, I believe. And. Um, it's a really, really good read because you get a lot of world building for this sort of slice of the galaxy where this story takes place. And not info dumpy at all, it's all organically done, but you get a really good sense of these worlds and their societies and their differences. And it's great, great um, world building for the whole series. And I thoroughly enjoyed them. And it isn't until book four, when you're reading chronologically, where you get to Miles with Warrior's Apprentice. Now, Miles, here's Miles. Okay? He's very small, very smart, very eager, lots of self-doubt, but also kind of full of himself. This is Miles. I really shouldn't go through that door, but I'm going to go through that door anyway. And he goes through that door, and he's like, I really should turn around and get back, go back. But there's another door over there. So you know what? I'm going to go through that door. And this is what Miles does. And he ends up in situations, and he gets deeper and deeper and deeper in them. Um, he's crafted this persona of Mr. Naismith, because he can't tell anybody he's Lord Vorkosigan's son, because they'll kidnap him or kill him. So he passes himself off as Mr. Naismith. And he's one of those personalities where people just kind of fall into his orbit. And the fun of both this Warrior's Apprentice and Book 5, The War Game, is watching him get himself into these situations and then watching him, like, how in the hell is he going to get out of this without getting himself killed and getting everybody else killed? And you watch him do this, and 
He doesn't always get everybody out. People die in this series. Um, but it's it's a rollicking space opera romp. It's I'm having such a good time reading these books. So out of the, I've read Warriors Apprentice, and then the novella Mountains of Mourning, and then the War Game. So five novels, one novella. The novella is actually a really interesting story where on Barriar, Lord Rokosigan, he owns all his land. So there's all these like little towns and villages like up in the mountains and a lot of it's kind of very backwater old school people still that as much as Bariar has progressed now that they're part of the galaxy again there's these little towns and where they're they still live the old school way so Miles ends up being sent up there by his father to investigate the murder of a baby infanticide I don't want to get into spoilers though but it's really really good so it's kind of like a mini murder mystery that Miles has to solve so now so Falling Free, I gave like three to three and a half stars. Um, Shards of Honor, four to four and a half stars. Barriar, five stars. War as Apprentice, four to four and a half stars. Mountains of Mourning, four stars. War Game, five stars. So that's two five stars, like three, four to four and a half stars, and one three to three and a half stars. Um, and among them, there's like three Hugo Award winners and one or two Nebula Award winners. The series as a whole, it's got like four Hugo Awards, two Nebulas, and the entire series won a Hugo as best sci-fi series just a couple of years ago. So yeah, it's a, lots and lots and lots of awards. But it is an old school science fiction space opera, running around, getting involved in all sorts of crazy stuff. There's lots of politics, there's lots of action, there's spaceship battles, and uh, all sorts of crazy stuff happen. And Miles is just one of those characters where in war game, just a tiny brief little thing, he has to pretend to be this arms dealer, I think Mr. Vargas. But he runs across one of the people who know him as Mr. Naismith. So for this brief moment, he's pretending to be Naismith, pretending to be Vargas for this person, but just pretending to be Vargas for that person. So he's like Robert Downey Jr. in Tropic Thunder. I mean, he's the dude disguises the dude pretending to be the other dude kind of thing but just a ball of fun. I mean, really, really. I can't believe it's taken me 25 years or so to finally get to this series, but I'm glad I am. So I highly recommend it. And again, I'm still just at the beginning. Um, but, and I really, really looking forward to it. But if any of that sounds up your, uh, your alley, um, hit me up in the comments if you've read these books or if this is the kind of thing you're interested in. Um, let me know what you think of this series.